wherever you are I just want you to lift up your voice and begin to magnify God for tonight Jesus is worthy lift up your voice and magnify him oh if he hasn't been him on our side our God is awesome Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Awesome God. How great thou art. You are God. Mighty are your miracle. Send forth your word. He healed them. Father, let the voice of healing send the Son of Righteousness who rise with healing in his wings. Rise, Lord, with healing in your wings. And heal the world. Heal people. Broken hearted. Wounded hearts. Lord, and men wounds and hearts. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Find the broken hearted. Set the captives free. Open the gates that are bound. Lord, 
want to declare ourselves our, our, our will of the Lord. And the day of vengeance. Give them beauty for ashes. Oil of joy for them for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. They shall be called the, the, the tree of righteousness. The planted of the Lord. signs and wonders. Let someone be healed, be delivered in the name of Jesus. For the whole of the month of May, the Lord has given us his word that he is restoring us. He is, he is helping us to recover all that we have lost in the past. Ten years ago, the commission was delivered. And it has gone through process to this time. The Lord has told us that he is recovering Bring him back. Bringing us back to the state where we were called. So in the month of May also being an important month in the lives of this commission, the Lord has given us this mighty word to hold on to. The word of God is mighty. The Bible said it is powerful and sharp. Sharper than two edges saw. It's the only the word of God who is able to Divide the spirit and the soul up till now. No, even not the best of lasers can, can even break the spirit and the soul. No one, don't, no, no one knows how to divide. But the Bible said the word of God is sharper and more powerful than any two-edged sword dividing the, 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 the spirit and the soul. So the word given to us this man. A month of recovery, I prophesy with all authority in God's word that you shall recover all in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And none shall be left behind in the name of Jesus. Yeah. There's a wave of revival blowing and a great awakening which you and I, we are going to play a major role in the recovery of God's people and God's property in this end time. I am proud to be one of the agents for change. And I believe that you too are proud to be one of the agents. This is the time for the church. And the authority of the church is going to be restored. The apostolic mantles are going to be released. That people will be in charge of nations, will be in charge of, of, of cities, will, will, will conquer territories for Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is the move of God coming. We should prepare ourselves for this. After, this. after this pandemic, which is gone forever, the, we are ushering in a new wave of revival. So God is restoring unto us the apostolic mantles, the mantle that had been gone for, for some time, the, the, the glory of the church that had, been, that had eluded us for some time. God is restoring us back. And one thing I believe for sure is that we will never remain the same. Hallelujah. God bless you so much for staying tuned for this broadcast. God bless you. Shall we go into the word of God? And tonight we are looking at the key, or I call the master key for total recovery. The master key for total recovery. The master key for total recovery. In God's word are stored up treasures for our benefit and for our full recovery. The word of God is the total master key. It is the master manual. It is the maker's manual. It is the manufacturer's manual for total overhauling, for total restoration of his people. God made up his word, combined them in 66 full books for our recovery. 
Anytime you read the word of God, it is about restoration. All the prophecies were geared towards the restoration of this end time. Every one of them. And God through his word has given us treasures, hidden treasures in that word for our recovery. So the master key for total recovery is God's word and tonight we are going to dive into it and see how we can, uh, we can, we can use it for our benefit. A manual can be given to you but until you know how to use the manual, it becomes another pack of leaflets or booklets in your shelves. Most of us, when we buy new gadgets, we even don't tend to read the manual because we don't see the use of the manual. Sometimes, yes, a norm may not be working. You take it to, to, to a, 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 a technician. And because he knows how to use the manual, he will tweak it in the twinkle of an eye and charge you big time. Meanwhile, the same thing, you could have done it in your own house. Because of your the, the, the attitude of our people, other people who have learned a bit about the manual takes advantage and even cheats them. But tonight, Paul said, I will not have you ignorant. I will not have you ignorant. People of God shouldn't be ignorant because the Bible said the lack of knowledge in my word, my people perish. The lack of knowledge in what I am saying, my people perish. God doesn't want you to perish. So tonight, you shall be edified and the minds of your understanding will be opened to God's word so that you can recover all in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's open to the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 7 to 8. Whereof I have made, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all things is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ that, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. That means in Christ, there is an unsearchable riches. Unsearchable. Meaning, you cannot find the end to this. It is unsearchable. And Bible said, when you read the book of John, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was God. And Christ is the word of God. He said, he is the mind of God. He is the wisdom of God. He said, there is an unsearchable riches in him. Unsearchable. And unto you search and seek diligently through his word. You may never find anything. People have searched and they have known a part. It is unending riches. The unsearchable means that unending riches. Them, you cannot find the beginning and the end. He is infinite in nature. The word of God is infinite. As far as your faith can grasp, you take. As far as your faith can, can hold, you take. The unsearchable riches in divine health. The unsearchable riches in prosperity and financial, financial dominion. The unsearchable help in dominion over principalities, demonic powers. The unsearchable riches in love. The unsearchable riches in every area of life. That's why when you read the book of John, third John, he said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be good, good health. He said, he didn't say that you will prosper and be in good health. He said, I wish above all things. So it's a wish, not a must. Until you search the, uns the unsearchable riches, until you search for it, you will not enjoy so many Christians are downtrodden because they are not searching for the unsearchable riches. He said, Paul said, he was a man of death. Insight. And you know, this man couldn't die. So he knew that my journey is over. This man couldn't forsake. One day he went to a place and after the shipwreck, they just gathered some wolves. A venom, a venom snake or a venom snake bit this man 
and he shook the snake into fire the people said indeed this man is a wicked man he will die because god doesn't want him to even escape prison do you know what he did they stood there they were watching him they were watching him this man was was not dying they were watching him he wasn't dying after some time the people said oh then this man is a godly man because this snake cannot bite you the enemy cannot shoot you down like this and you will still rise because he had the revelation about his position in, in divine health he this man said for i am the least among the saints but i have been privileged to know the unsearchable riches so i am privileged to teach it so i know tonight if somebody will tap into the unsearchable riches in every area of his life in marriage in destiny in career you shall be unstoppable like paul in the name of jesus bible said and paul he was beaten down to death stoned to death he rise up and shake himself i am not dead yet this man he said if i have any boast i'll boast in my affliction the things i've gone through so many times i've been separate i've been mocked to death yes i couldn't die because this man was a man of insight into god's word the power the unsearchable riches you know there are some there are some things when you discover in god's word you can you can die till you decide and when the lord opened my eyes to see he said with long life will i satisfy you i asked the question so is it the consumer who determines satisfaction or the or the supplier is it the consumer so if i am not satisfied with life there is no way i can die that's why paul said i have finished the race i i have finished now uh, it's awaiting for me a crown of glory in heaven i am ready to depart he told timothy timothy my son i am ready to depart this is a man of insight he knew the riches of god hallelujah when we book the book of isaiah chapter 43 chapter 45 verse 3 he said and i will give unto thee the treasures in darkness and the hidden riches in the secret places that thou mayest know that i the lord which has called you by thy name i am the god of israel he was talking to cyrus he said they are setting riches they are hidden they are they are in darkness until you search for them do you know if you have read stories when you were young you read the adventures of this adventures of columbus what 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 all uh, the all the other the, those who took adventures they were looking for hidden treasures some could search and search and search and search they were called explorers one missionary called david livingston was an explorer bible and, and history says he opened up africa for the gospel and also for trade nobody had come to africa before but because he searched he drew maps he discovered lake victoria he discovered so many things this was a missionary to africa he was an explorer going to places where nobody would go to wow so until there are hidden treasures in darkness there are treasures in darkness and hidden riches in secret places in this end time the lord is revealing and unveiling and pouring down these treasures onto earthly vessels hallelujah and i am glad to tell you that if you open up your vessel you shall be one of them i am one of them for i am the least among them but god through his grace has given unto me to preach this 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 riches unto this generation there are so many riches in our recovery god has laid them down for you until you know them you are not entitled to them in this our work with god until you know you are not entitled i have seen people who have served god in holiness in righteousness but they died 
as paupers, never amounting to nothing. They were even the, the mockery of men. And they saw them die in that area. So they gave this, this, this saying that as poor as a church mouse. Why? Because they saw the church to be very poor. But in this end time, the riches of the glory of financial dominion had been handed over to the church. The men of God like Kenneth Copeland, men of God like Bishop Oidepo, men of God of these kinds are making the gospel now appealing in terms of riches again, in terms of financial dominion, in terms of prosperity. Now the world is even envious of the church. And these last days, in these times right now, people are complaining that, ah, why is the church taking time? The church are too rich. They cry, they can't, why they, why they cry, can't they support government? You only support somebody who is ready to listen to you. Here, here, man, let me tell you, the world, we are ready to support those who will listen to us. How can you support something who do, who, 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 somebody who doesn't listen to you? Bible said, even God will not cast out his spells to swines. He will only cast out his spells to those who will utilize it well. So the riches of God are to them that are ready to use it. Don't die without searching, without seeking, without knowing these riches. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When we read the book of Isaiah 12, verse 3, he said, for therefore with joy shall we dwell water out of the wells of salvation. The salvation package comes with different kinds of wells. And every well you draw from, you need a container to draw from. And that's the container of your faith or your knowledge. The more you know, the more you do. Everything that is discovered has been, it's already covered. God has created it already. So until you discover it, it doesn't become yours. I go into search and I find. I know that there is no way I can be poor. There is no way. I, it's not because I heard the preaching from somewhere. It's not because I, I somebody told me. It is because Bible said he, Jesus, became poor. So I, when I walk through him, I will be rich. So he took away my poverty. That when I walk in him, I'll be rich. Oh, goodness. Then I started searching. He said, you shall be the head and not the tail. The day that I discovered that ye shall not borrow. I said, God, that's the end of my borrowing. I started paying off my debt. But ye shall learn unto nations. And no more. Anything that God, the word of God says, I attach seriousness to it. Hallelujah. People of God, it is now time for us, if you want full recovery of our glorious destiny in Christ, we must be the students of God's word. So that we search for this unsearchable riches. People have not searched. That's why Jesus said, if you will seek me diligently, so there is a form of seeking which makes you find. And it is called diligent seeking. Diligent. Di diligent seeking. Ah, God, I am barren. I, I need, because your, your blessings of Adam, which you have restored us back, said that, and he blessed them. And he said, multiply, be fruitful, multiply, be fruitful, multiply. That means he blessed them and he said, be fruitful, multiply. So there is no way that man shouldn't, shouldn't be fruitful and multiply. Beloved, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is powerful. The word of God is powerful. When you identify the devil is oppressing you in any area. Ha! Huh. Devil said, a male and female, he created them. And he gave them charge. Which is, have dominion. That means you need to exercise your dominion. 
You need to exercise your dominion. He said, I have given unto you all power in heaven and on earth. I, begin, I give it to you. Go out. Cast out devils. Lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. This is the charge of dominion. So there is no way a demon should oppress me. A demon should oppress a generation where I am of, at my presence. I will set a light shining in darkness. Darkness comprehended not. Yes, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my power. So when I have dominion or, in, or I have light, which is God's word, for the entrance of your word, give it light. So the word of God makes me shine that darkness cannot contain. Wow, that is the word of God. Tonight, tonight, I am telling you that if you, as a child of God, will go for this unsearchable riches in God, you shall recover all in the name of Jesus. When we read the book of Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 to 19, when I read this word, I was, God, what is, so your own people can miss it. Let's look, let's go through. That said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. Ask for the old power. Where is the good way and walk therein? And ye shall find a rest for your souls. But they say, we will not walk therein. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they say, we will not hearken. Ha! We will not walk. We will not hearken. Therefore, hear, hear ye nation, and know, O congregation, what is among them? Hear, O earth, Behold, I will bring evil upon these people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my ways, nor my laws, but rejected it. He said, there is a place of rest. If thou will walk in the old landmark, in the old book of the Bible, if thou will walk in the revelation of God's word, you will find rest for your soul. He said, we should labor to enter our rest. So our labeling should be to enter our rest. How can we enter your rest? When you have identified the old path. Hallelujah. He said, I gave to them the old path. They said we were not working. I set up watchmen to sound a trumpet to them. They said we were not hacking. Because of this, I will let evil come upon them, even upon their thoughts. Hallelujah. So that means they cannot even think good for themselves. Because as a man thinks, so is he. So he brought evil into their thoughts. That evil will come to them. Sometimes it's not the work of demons. It is not the work, the work of witchcraft spirits. It is not the work of principalities. Because we have dominion over them. It is the work of our reluctancy to or, 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 or our hesitation to dive into God's word to find out these riches to work in. Tonight, I am making your, your the available to you the riches. If thou will work in it, you shall have rest for your soul. Hallelujah. How do we use this master key? How do we go on serious searching? How do we use this master key of the word for our recovery? How do we use matter key for this word for recovery? And I must say, and I must say this call straight. Until you have the spirit of God, you are not entitled to the searches. You know, every area or in every city, until you are a son of the city or a member of that city, you are not entitled to the good of that city. Strangers are not entitled to properties. Strangers are not entitled to anything in the, in the town. When they are sharing. Like for instance, if Ghana is sharing goods to its citizens, unto US citizens, they are not entitled to. God, the promise of God is to his citizens, the citizens in the kingdom of God. And first of all, you must be a kingdom citizen. Being a kingdom citizen. Bible says, as many as believed in him, he gave them power 
to become the sons of God and has dreamt that belief in his name. John chapter 1 verse 12. Until you are a son of God, until you believe in Jesus, until you have the spirit, that is the seal of our sonship. Said the spirit buried, buried with enough and shout, Abba, Father. Also, God is your father. You are not entitled to inheritance. Slaves are not entitled to inheritance. Servants are not entitled. It is sons that are entitled to inheritance. Hallelujah. So, the secret riches, the hidden riches, the treasures in darkness are given to sons. The unsearchable riches for a third point is sons who are entitled to search. Not anybody. And tonight, you have been given the title to search for it. Hallelujah. Feel the spirit of God. That's your starting point. Second, you must live a concentrated life for the spirit of consecration to dwell in you mightily. Until you live a consecrated life, you are not, even though you are a son, you can never enjoy the riches. Hallelujah. Consecrated life. A life of holiness and of workings of righteousness. Consecrate your life. Love righteousness. Hate evil for the Holy Spirit to dwell within you. The Holy Spirit is a Holy Spirit. It is not an evil spirit. The Holy Spirit is a Holy Spirit. He is not something we joke with. He is not the tongues we speak. He is not the manifestations you do. He is the Holy Spirit. If you want to worship God, you must worship Him in truth, in righteousness, in holiness. He said in the last days, God seeks them to worship Him. And those He seeks, are those who worship him in truth and in spirit. Until you have the spirit, your worship to God is nothing. And before the spirit of God can dwell within you mightily, your life must be consecrated on the altar before the law. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. That thou hast loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore, even therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above your fellows. And read the book of Psalm 1. The first book of Psalm 1. The first chapter. He said, blessed. Until you are blessed. You are not entitled to revelation. He said, because they hacking not. Neither do did they walk not therein. He brought evil into their thought. That means, if God can resist you from recovering. God can resist you because when you decide not. So he said, blessed. Before you can be blessed, it takes a blessed person to, to go on a search in God's way. And, and, and the first Psalm, the book of Psalm 1 will tell you, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsels of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sitteth on the seat of the scoffer, these are people who are set apart for God. Set apart for God. They are set apart with everything they are, they are set apart for God. Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that present yourselves as a living sacrifice. Holy, blameless, as much as possible. Stay away from evil. Said them that call upon the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. Stay away from evil. Stay away from iniquity. And every appearance of evil. Now people of God we want recovery. But we also, also, also want to stay in the camp of the devil. Until you leave camps. You are not entitled to property. Hey, the prodigal son was reinstated because he came back to his father. If he had stayed in the other county, his father wouldn't have minded him. Bible said the father was always watching for his, his return. But until he returned, he never had a new cloth. Until he returned, he never had a new ring. Until he returned, he never had a party thrown for him. 
he would have died. Men and women of God, stay away from evil. Any appearance, all kinds of things, whatever that is no right before the Lord, stay away. Sin is a spirit. When it enters you, God doesn't know you. Iniquity is a spirit. When it enters you, God doesn't know you. That's why two spirits cannot dwell within one body. That's why the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in the body where sin also dwells. It doesn't matter whether you are the deacon, the minister, the pastor, the prophet, the apostle. God is not interested in these titles. He's interested in them. That worketh not in the counsels of the ungodly. Sitters. Standing in the ways of sinners. No, seated on the seat of the scuffle. But his delight is in the word of the law. His delight is what? In the word of the law. That's where his passion is from. Some of us, our passion are for all kinds of things. Our pa- we derive passion from football. We derive passion from drinking. We derive passion from friends throwing parties. This is our delight. Bible says, delight yourself in the law and shall give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in God. But his delight is in the word of the Lord. Why will he meditate day and night? So consecration is the key to accessing divine revelation. Consecration is the key to accessing divine revelation. Until you are consecrated, you are not entitled to revelation. Until you are consecrated, you are not entitled to recovery. Consecration. Consecrate yourself. Set yourself apart. That, like Daniel said in the book of Daniel 1 8, and Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's name. Let's look at what God requires of us in consecration. When we read the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1, when if you one thing about scriptures, if you want to really understand total recovery, if you want to understand riches, if you want to understand how God blesses man. I believe that the book of Job is one of the books you shouldn't joke with. You should learn it seriously with all your heart. If you really want to be rich, because all the secret of financial prosperity is hidden in Job. Look at the description of Job. The true description of a holy man. Look at it. Job 1 verse 1. He said, There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. God! That man was perfect and upright. And the one that feared God and skilled evil. He was upright and perfect. He was righteous and blameless. And he feared God. And skilled evil. Not only fearing God. But he also ran away from evil. This is the true picture. If you want God to bless you. If you want to ascend. This man said. You go and he said. In the book of Job 29. He said. In ah, that I was in the, my old age or my youth when the spirit of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. Go there for me. Book of Job, Job 29. Book of Job 29. Let, let's go there and read together. Ha! That's one of my favorite scriptures. Job 29. The 29. Verse 2. Oh, let's, let's jump to the verse 3. Oh, yes. The verse 3. When his candle shine upon my head. Let's go. Let's, let's start from the verse 2. Oh, that I was in the month, as in the month past. As in the days when God preserved me. When his candle shine upon my head. When by his light I walked through darkness. Oh, by divine revelation, no darkness was able to stand before me. People of God, when there, there's a darkness in the area of your in the area of your life, check your level of light. Take care of your level of revelation. And you shall eat plenty and be satisfied. If you are not eating in plenty, check the level of revelation. Say, oh, when the light of God was upon when I walked in light, when it's light, I walked through darkness. The age we live in is full of darkness. Until you have maximum light, you cannot triumph. The life of a triumph or a triumphant Christian is dependent on the level of revelation that he walked. 
not just, just knowing, but walking in it. The level of revelation, he walks in it. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Oh, when the Almighty was yet with me. So you see, consecrated life, Holy Ghost with him. Oh, yet with me. And when my children were about me. Oh, when I washed my feet in butter. Butter means it's a chance milk. The milk of God's word. And the rock poured me out rivers of oil. The rock is Jesus. It is his word. Poured me rivers of oil. So your level of anointing even depends on the level of revelation. The reason why the moment we pray for the sick, the sick gets healed because God has given me revelation in divine healing. And I am never I, God has given us dominion by the grace of God in that area. He has given us revelation. And he taught us that healing is part of the salvation package. As a man gets healed, as a man gets saved, he's entitled to healing. As a man gets saved, he's entitled to the Holy Spirit. You all bear witness how we do Holy Ghost baptism. It is stress-free. We don't wait and, 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 and fast for 60 days, 20 days for the Holy Ghost baptism. By insight, it comes easily. Life becomes easy when you have insight. Ha! Ah, people of God, it's had now time for children of God to chance on the light of God. But look at this. Job's friend told him, Eliphaz said, Acquaint yourself with the Lord. Job 22. Let's go there. Verse 21. Acquaint us or yourself with the Lord. Acquaint now thyself with him. And be at peace with him. By good, thereby good shall come to thee. Receive, I pray thee, that the law from his mouth. And lay up his word in your heart. You see, it has come back again. And lay up his word in your heart. And if thou will return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt recover. Thou shalt be restored. And if thou shalt put iniquities away from the tabernacle, then shall thou lay up gold like dust. And go like Ufas as a stones of the brooks. Wow. You see, everything turns back to holiness and to the study of God's word. You people of God, how many of you have time for his word? You think that prosperity will come from your hard work? You think that prosperity will come from your, your, your up and down? Until God's word is in place. Until holiness is in place, your hard work is vanity. Until God's work is, word is in place, until your holiness is in place, there is no way you can gather up gold. Unless maybe through the, dev, the, the devilish means. The do evil means. The devil, the evil. The devilish means. By bribery and corruption. And let me tell you, whatever you didn't get from God, you will lose it. Because it cannot last. Whatever is not from the Lord, it cannot last. Whatever you receive from the last of your flesh, it cannot last. Bible said everything shall pass away by my word. So anything you, you acquire with the basis of God's word stands sure. Beloved, consecration is the key to revelation. Holiness never is an estimate. Until you skill evil and fear the Lord with all your heart. Ha! How when you see that evil coming, you say, I will not be a part of this. Do everybody will do it. Now we live in the world. Where, because the, the devil knows that when he is able to get evil to you, he you lose your inheritance. If he's able to get you walk through in darkness, you, you cannot see anything. Now in this world, evil is being perpetuated. And people see it and they don't talk. The church is silenced over this. So our children don't know what is good and evil. They don't know what is, what is light and darkness. Because they have walked in darkness for long. 
and you are managing through darkness. How can the church of God even appraise and, and condone to gay marriage? How can the church of God sit down and people come and pay bribes of, of, their, of their wicked acts and the church receives it? Unless I don't know. If I know that you are a prostitute, take your money. God is not interested in prostitution money. God is not interested in bribery and corruption money. The church of God has been silenced over this. And holiness is derailing. And now we want the, the, the society to teach our children morals. We don't teach morals. We teach holiness by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Secondly, you, or thirdly, studiously study. Studiously study. Studiously what? Study the word of God. You must studiously study. Not seriously. Studiously. Hard work. It doesn't come easy. If you don't make time for God's word, it doesn't come easy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The devil will not, if, the devil will not fight you going on Facebook. You see that people can go on social media for so many hours. But when it comes to the word of God, they find it very it's difficult to even read it for minutes. You can stay all awake social, with social, on, the, on that social mess. Gossiping. Do you know, even preaching, when you listen to preaching, it's difficult. But when you look, look at funny clips, you can waste all your credit on funny clips. That's why I am not against the church being on social media platforms but that is not the way forward do not forsake the assembly of the saints the devil knows that he can distract you when you go on there every move of god is not on technology the move of god is on the shoulders of men and i'm telling you God will move in this end time when men are available. Why did God kill Uzzah? Uzzah was trying to help God, but God killed him. You know why? Because the ark of God was on a cart. The ark of God by the law of God was supposed to be on the shoulders of men. Not on, the, on, the, on, 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 on horsebacks, not on social media. Until men takes up the work of God and put on their, on, their, on their shoulder, we will not see the glory of God. Look at how people are, are so cold. I called somebody today. I said, the church is supposed to check your spiritual tempera temperature. Say, man of God, we are already cold though. We are very, very cold. How many of you can stay on social media and pray for hours? That's why the church must rise up and send this corona back to hell. That the assembly of God can, can, can come together again. It's on the shoulders of men. Without it, the blessings of God will not come. The blessings of God will never come. Because every move of God has been on the shoulders of men. One man, one, 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 a person, one, one, one told me this. He said, now on social media, on Sundays, you can go to four churches in 30 minutes. You can visit four churches in 30 minutes. Just click here, just watch, watch this one, go small to this one. So, so within 30 minutes, you can go to four different churches. And you are closed for the day. Ask yourself, one listen to me. How many times are you able to stay with God's word? And tell me the advantages of this social mess. The devil cannot rule. In the mighty name of Jesus, anybody behind this perpetuating this evil is cursed to its roots. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We must be bold. Tediously study God's word. Meditate on it. 
make the word of God your delight. He said, but his delight is in God's word. When you can't take a bite of God's word within, within, intermittently, when you can't take a bite of God's word, the word of God is your delight. That everywhere you go, you have your Bible with you. Even your business, as you are serving, you move a little and open a verse and chew. If food is not your delight, you, can, you, 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 you grow as, as, as man malnourished. If food, if you don't delight in food, you, you, you get koshoko. You must eat well to grow well. So before you can grow well in God, the, the, you must delight yourself in God's word. Said, but in his word, he delight. In, in God's word, he delights. And let me give you this. Until you ask, you study God's word, your approval doesn't come. In financial dominion, until you study to get revelation in financial dominion, you cannot be approved. Approval comes by studying. Paul told Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, 5, 15. Study to show yourself approved of God. A workman who needs not to be ashamed. Anybody who is built up in God's word is never ashamed. He's never put to shame. His delight is in God's word. There will he meditate day and night. Day and night. He read things about it. He sees how to apply day and night. Thinking about it. He said, this one shall be like a tree planted by the riverside. It will never be put to shame. He said, he is, his root will never, or his leaves will never wither. He will never be put to shame. Any area of shame, sit down and study. Search the word of God. Get a concordance go through. Meet a man of God for him to explain to you. Get books. That will expand your knowledge in these areas. And you shall never be a pauper in the name of Jesus. Today I prophesy to you by the revelation coming to you. That no devil shall harass you anymore in the name of Jesus. Hey, anything that made you shame. Say for your shame you shall receive double. In the name of Jesus. You are receiving double in the name of Jesus. Amen. That thing that caused you shame. Has finally been taken over in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ah, that shame, that garment of shame, is removed from you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your life has come to light again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Study to show yourself approved. Someone asked me, What is the secret of success? So the secret of success is in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt, what? Meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. That, that means, you should find the old landmark and walk in it. And you shall find rest for your soul. There's a rest for somebody. I said there's a rest for somebody. Yes. I said there's a rest for somebody. Yes. God said, labor to enter your rest. Labor to enter your rest. Hebrews chapter 4. Yes. People have labored and they didn't enter. By you. Make sure you labor. Because there's a rest waiting for you. Every child of God, there's a rest. A place you reach and things work as you work. The, your little effort you put in gives a hundredfold blessing. This is the place. You shall not lose your place of rest in the name of Jesus. But his delight is in the word of the Lord. He said, ye shall have good success. And you shall prosper in all your ways. People of God, until we have, we study, you don't know. In the area of finances, if you are struggling in finances, go to the word of God and check all the prosperity covenants. What does he say? In the area of health, God showed me. And how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all of them that were oppressed by the devil. And the Lord was with them. Ah, my eyes open. So healing 
or sickness, infirmity, is oppressions of the devil. Therefore, I don't even entertain headache. I don't entertain malaria. That, oh, this one, no, no, no. I, I don't. It is oppression of the devil. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, every oppression of the devil over your life is cast out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you get the revelation that you have authority, they said knowledge is power in a normal sense. I'm telling you, knowledge is power. When you have knowledge, you have power. But if you don't excite the power, you are powerless. <laughs> knowledge is power. You can have power. But if you don't exercise that power, you are what? Powerless. We must exercise the power of God. Walk in dominion. Because that was our charge. Marital dominion. Where the devil has no right in your marriage. Financial dominion. The devil has no right in your finances. You grow. When you sow, you reap. Nobody can take your harvest. I said nobody. If you study God's word, there is no way That you don't know. That comes to my last point. The last one. Total obedience in your findings in God's word. Working, working in your findings. When you have found it, you are delighted. Bible said, the kingdom of God is like a woman who, who lost, or who a man who was searching for something, a pearl. He went to a field and saw that there was a pearl in the field. He sold all that he had. And he went in for the, the pearl. He took it and he was so happy about it. And walked with it. Until you walk with God's word, your findings. Like you said, you want to be prosperous. And there's a covenant that gave and shall be given unto you. There's a covenant. We say that pay your tithe, the windows of heaven will open unto you. There's a covenant. And you decide not to obey. But you want to harvest. Are you a thief? Or an arm robber? Until you put them to work, you, you have nothing working for you. The covenant of God is based on total obedience. John 2 verse 5. And Mary told them, whatever he tells you, do it. That's the secret. Whatever the world tells you, do it. When I read Psalm 1, blessed are they, do you know there are a lot of blessed in the Bible? The Beatitudes. Blessed are this, blessed are this. So if I want to be blessed, I must find myself in the category of one of them. I came to someone. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of ungodly. I told myself, from this day, if you are not a Christian, if you don't belong to a Christian society, I don't take your advice. Whether it's a good advice or bad advice, I don't take it. Secondly, walk not in the standing on the ways of sinners. If you are my friend and you're not a Christian, I cancel you. You're no more my friend. Ha! I am so sent on this. One day we had a taxi and we wanted a driver. I, I, I announced in church, the church, some of them brought some people. The people came and they were not competent. You know, some, some of the Christians are so lazy. Some of them, not all. They are so lazy. Well, they are not Christians. Because if you are a Christian, you will be hardworking. Because if you are a Christian, you will be a word of word. See a man diligent in his business. It shall stand because he is not a main man. So you are a lazy person. You are not a Christian. Even in the first place. Hallelujah. God called them slothful. If you are slothful, you are not a Christian. He said, go to the ants. Proverbs says, consider his ways and be wise. Because every child of God has the wisdom of God. So he's wise. A wise man does work. Hallelujah. So if you are lazy, you are not even a child of God. So I won't classify them as children of God. They came. And they brought one man. The man sat before me. He knew what he was, was doing. You see that he was very hard working. And I asked him, which church do you go to? He said, Sir, I am a Muslim. He said, I am of another religion. I said, no. They don't give you the word. Be not equally yoked with unbelievers. It doesn't matter how skillful you are. 
I don't go into agreement. I don't go into covenant with other people who are not of God. It is not right. I will not go. No. My own work, I will never employ an unbeliever. I don't care about the, 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 the conditions or the, the laws of the land. If the laws, are they the one who put money in my pocket? Did they set up the company for me? People of God, you must. If it's on transactional basis, you are selling food, an unbeliever comes to buy some, no problem. But you do not be equally yoked. You are in, in partnership, in agreement with them. How the one that mocks your God, then you are in agreement with them. Say, stand it not in the ways of sinners. Some Christians will tell, oh me, that's why I don't like Christians. Even in my workplace, I, I prefer to pick an unbeliever because they are hardworking. It's because you have not found a Christian. It's because you have not found a Christian. Find one and you see that you will prosper. Ha. Joseph was in the house of Potiphar. There. He said, because of you, God has blessed me. Jacob was in the house of Laban. Laban said, because of you, God has blessed me. Find a Christian and you see that your, heart, your business will grow. I have said that those who do not, are not hardworking are not Christians in the first place. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. He says, If we are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. There is good in every land. Obedience is the key. Obedience is the key. And Samuel, the book of Samuel, chapter 1, the book of Samuel, chapter, chapter 15, verse 22 to 23, he said, And Samuel had the Lord as great a delight, in, was it? Samuel said, Has the Lord great, as great delight in burnt offering or sacrifice? As obeying his voice, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken is better, or to hearken than the fat of rams. He said, rebellion is like witchcraft. So anybody who doesn't obey the word of the Lord, God sees you as rebellious, and God sees you as what? A witch or a wizard. God sees you as a witch or a wizard. So as a child of God, if you don't obey God's word, which you have been taught, you are classified as what? A witch or a wizard. Hallelujah. And as I end, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. Let's go there. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 21. Great word of God. This was a promise of recovery to the people. He said, and it shall come to pass. It will only come to pass on this condition. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord will set you on high above the nations of the earth. Obedience and observing to walk. There is a place for us. There is a place for a child of God. There is a place for you. There is a place for me. If we will search out, if we will walk in it, if we will obey the God's word, if we will delight ourselves in the law, ha. Ah, We shall find fulfillment in all the days of our life. I pray for somebody tonight. That from tonight, the mind of your understanding is open in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever you sit down to study in God's word, you will understand the name of Jesus. Amen. New light is shown, is shown into your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nothing can stop you from today in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, I bless you. I bless you with the fullness of the blessings of the Lord. That you are recovering all in the name of Jesus. 
Nothing will elude you. Nothing will escape you. But the devil is put under your feet from tonight in the name of Jesus. The light that has come to you has scattered your darkness. Has shattered your darkness forever. From today, you are walking the full revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. You are blessed. You are highly favored in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. If you are here and you are not not a child of God, you are not even part of the covenant. You are not part of the kingdom. You are not entitled to freedom. Until you are part of this kingdom, you are not entitled to freedom. Tonight, I give you that option. I give your life to Jesus. And come to this kingdom so that your freedom, for he that the son of man sets free, he is what? Free indeed. Tonight, I pray for you. Just begin to tell Jesus to come into your life. Right now, wherever you are, just Jesus, come into my life. I give you all from today. I give you all from today. Come into my life. And those of you who also want to rededicate them themselves, those who are here, and those who are also listening to me, if you want to dedicate, rededicate yourself to God. You can be in church. You know, some people are even men of God, but they are not of God. They call themselves men of God because that title, nobody will dedicate it. But they are not of God. So you need to rededicate yourself to God. And know that you are part of his. Maybe you have also meandered or, or, or found your way through life. You are not of God. Come back to him. And pray this prayer, prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. and Make you the Lord over my life. Tonight, I give you my life. I dedicate myself to you. Jesus, you are the Lord over my life. Help me to live for you. I believe that you are the son of God and that you died for me. With all my heart, I believe from today, forgive me all my sins and help me. Thank you for bringing me part and making me part of your kingdom. Father, I thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. If you pray this prayer with me, your life is really dedicated. Make sure that you follow what has been taught. When, whenever, if you want to get the tape, find the tape. Listen to it again and again. It's going to be a blessing to you. Today, I pray for everybody who is sick. If you are sick in any part of your body, just touch that part of your body and let me pray for you. And this is the voice of healing. So the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And as he, nobody can fly without flapping the wings. And as they flap the wings, healing will fall from the wings. Today, Jesus soaring higher with us, flapping the wings. Let me pray for you. And let the healing of God land upon you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I curse every infirmity from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I curse infirmity in the name of Jesus. I curse sickness. I curse affliction. I curse oppression. You devil, get your hands off them in the name of Jesus. Get your hands off them. Let them be free. Forever in the name of Jesus. Forever in the name of Jesus. Forever in the name of Jesus. Sickness, be gone. Pain, be gone. Every sickness, named and unnamed, known or unknown, be gone forever. Now I declare you whole. I declare you healed. I declare you made whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For spreading your wings and flapping them with healing all over the place. Thank you, Lord. Now, you devil, you have no right over any single soul here. Any single soul listen to me. Get your hands off them and never come back. In Jesus' mighty name. Be gone. And check back to hell. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, whatever you couldn't do, just start doing them and sending your testimony. Also, let us all. Share it to the glory of God. On Sunday, we will share a few testimonies that the Lord, through his grace, has blessed us through the anointing and the messages being preached.
on Sunday. There are a lot of testimonies. Today, time is on our side, so Sunday we'll share testimonies with the people of God so that you know what the Lord is doing and be encouraged that the Lord is on our side. God richly bless you. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, wherever you are, pick up your communion. Let's rise up and take our communion. It's a communion service. Pick up your communion. Those of us also watching, anytime you watch this video, just pick up a, a drink and a, and, a, and a bread and let us bless it for you. The Lord will be with you and will heal you from all your sicknesses and diseases. Now pick it up and let me pray for it. Father, I bless the bread that, they, that your people hold and I bless the drink that is in your hands. I pray that and I declare that this is the holy communion of God, the body of Christ and the, the blood of Jesus. As they take it, they, every attack of the devil over their life is nullified in the mighty name of Jesus. They are healed fully in Jesus' mighty name. They are restored fully in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus.